What's up, everybody, and welcome back to OpenStax Algebra and Trigonometry, Chapter 6, Section 5, Logarithmic Properties. Let's do it. So question number one asks, how does the power rule for logarithms help on solving logarithms in this form? So first of all, what is the power rule? So I'm going to rewrite this as x to the 1 over n power. So the reason why I'm allowed to do this is because when we have a rational exponent, the numerator is the power, which again, anything to the first power is just itself. The denominator is the root. And this does say to the nth root. So this is uh, um, something that is a legal move. I'm allowed to convert the nth root to one over n power. And then the power rule states that if I have logarithm of something to a specific power, it is equivalent to me bringing this down as a coefficient. So this is equal to one over n log base b of x. And the reason why this might make it easier is because sometimes you may know what is log base b of x. You may be able to calculate that and then you just multiply it by one over n. So that can make it a little bit easier. So there's your answer, done. So for this one, we're meant to expand this as much as possible. And we're gonna start with one of the logarithm rules which says that log of x times y is the same as log of x plus log of y. So we're allowed to consolidate this by multiplying these arguments. Likewise, when two arguments are being multiplied, we can expand it. So we can expand this first to log base b of 7x plus log base b of 2y. Now again, we have a 7 and a 2 multiplying the x and the y, so we can break that up further to log base, so we can break that up further into log base b of 7 plus log base b of x plus, this splits up into log base b of 2 plus log base b of y. So this is pretty much how they have this written out in the answers. Just one other thing, if you wanted to, you could recombine these two, right? You could recombine this by adding those together, aka multiplying the arguments to be log base b of 14 and then plus the remaining two. But I'm gonna leave it like this because this is how they have it presented in the answers. So there you go, boom, done. So for this one, we can expand it by recognizing that log base b of x over y is the same thing as log base b of x, the first, the, the numerator, right, minus what's on the denominator, log base b of y. So this is another rule that we can utilize, or another property of logarithms, which means this is equivalent to log base b of 13 minus log base b of 17, boom, done. So for this one, we're gonna use that quotient property of logarithms, which says that this can be rewritten as ln of the numerator minus ln of the denominator. So we're just splitting it up like this. Now we can simplify further because ln of one, any log of one is saying the base to what power equals one, and that's always gonna be zero. So I can rewrite that as zero, and then I can say minus ln of four to the k. I can again use the power rule here, by the way, to bring this k down, just to simplify it a little bit more, and then I don't need to write the zero. So I can say this is equivalent to negative k times ln of four, boom, done. Now for number nine, we're condensing these logarithms. So when you add all the logarithms with the same base, these are all base E, right? That's natural log. It's the same as multiplying these arguments. So I can consolidate it into ln of seven times X times Y, boom, done. So for this subtraction, I can use the property that says subtraction is the same as consolidating this. Again, the bases have to be the same, which they are, into a quotient, right? Subtraction is a quotient, so it becomes the first one minus the second one is the first one over the second. And of course, 28 over seven reduces to four. So this is log base B of four, boom, done. So for this one, I'm gonna start by making this quotient into a subtraction situation, right? So I can say negative log base B of one minus log base B of seven. Again, that, that's the quotient property in reverse, right? So something divided by something, I can make it as log of that minus log of that. So we have this. Then log base B of one, the beauty of that is log of any base of one is always gonna say B to what power is one. That's always gonna be zero. So this can be zero. Now we have negative, negative log base B of seven. Those two negatives are gonna cancel out. So we're left with log base B of seven, boom, done. So for number 15, we're gonna expand this as much as possible. So notice what's happening. The two on the top are multiplying. So that becomes a, an addition thing. Log base x of 15 and then multiplied becomes plus log base 10. Again, th there's no base there, so it's assumed to be 10 
of y to the 13th. And what about this denominator? That's going to be subtracted, right? So it's, again, that quotient pro uh, property, so that's log of z to the 19th. Then we're going to use the power rule, which tells us that we're allowed to bring all these powers down as coefficients, like so. So our final answer is 15 log of x plus 13 log of y minus 19 log of z. There's your answer. Boom. So for this one, I'm going to start by turning that square root into an exponent of one half, their equivalent. So it's log of x cubed y to the negative fourth, and both of these are being raised to the one half power. Next, I'm going to distribute this in by multiplication. So one half is going to multiply both of those. So it's log of x to the three halves y to the negative four times one half, which is negative two. Then I'm going to use the product rule to break this up into addition. So it's log of x to the 3 halves, and since it's multiplying y to the negative 2, it's plus log of y to the negative 2. Last but not least, I'm going to bring my power rule into the mix, which allows me to take this exponent and move it to the front. Same with this one as a coefficient. So now I have 3 halves log of x, and then that's negative 2, so I can say minus 2 log of y. That's how you do it. Boom. So for this one, I'm going to start by rewriting that cubic root as an exponent up to the one-third power. So let's start there. So now instead of taking the cubic root, I'm raising this to the one-third power. But again, it's the same. And now I can distribute this exponent in by via multiplication because of our exponent rules. So one-third times two is two-thirds. One-third times five is five-thirds. And then we can take this further. Look, I got like terms here. So I can add the exponents. Same with these guys, because they're multiplying, I can add the exponents. So two plus two thirds is eight thirds. So it's x to the eight thirds. And then three plus five thirds, that's nine plus five is 14 thirds. Now, since these two are multiplying, I can use the product rule to break it up into an addition thing. So it's log of x to the eight thirds plus log of y to the 14 thirds. Last but not least, I'm gonna use my power rule and bring this power back down as a coefficient like so. And we've got 8 thirds times log of x plus 14 thirds times log of y. There is your answer. Done. So for number 21, we're meant to condense this. And the good news is we've got the same base for these logarithms because they're natural logs, so it's base e. So when we have the same base, we can use our subtraction rule, which turns us into a quotient. So it's ln of that first term, which is 6x to the ninth over the second one, which is 3x squared. Then I can just simplify, right? 6 over 3 is 2. x to the 9th over x squared, we subtract those exponents, it becomes x to the 7th. So there's your final answer. Boom. Done. So for this one, the good news is we have log base 10 for all three, which means we can consolidate everything. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these coefficients and I'm going to turn them into exponents. So this log x stays as is. This one half becomes an exponent of y, but anything raised to the one half, I'm really taking the square root. So I can say minus log square root of y. And then last but not least, I have three log z. I can bring that up as an exponent. So I can say plus log z cubed. Now with the subtraction first, I'm going to turn that into a fraction, right? This minus this means it's x over square root of y. And then we're adding on again the z cubed. That means it's going to be multiplied against that x, right? These are the two we're kind of adding together. And so then we got a z cubed over here, which means this is our final answer. Boom, done. So for this one, we're using that the change of base formula. And the change of base formula is pretty cool because basically if you think about it like this, this is the big number, this is the base, right? If I rewrite this with any log base, I can rewrite it to an equivalent expression. Meaning if I take log base 10, I can say this is equal to log of 15, log base 10 of 15 over log base 10 of seven. I can do that with any base. So if I'm making a base E, it's the same thing. I can make it log base E of 15 over log base seven. And just to simplify a little further, log base E is the same as ln. So the best way to write this is ln of 15 over ln of seven, boom. So for this one, we're assuming that log base 5 of 6 is A, log base 5 of 11 is B. So we're going to use the change of base formula to write this in terms of A and B. Change of base says that log base anything of that big number of the argument of 5 
over log base anything as long as it's the same as the base of the numerator of 11 is equivalent to this expression. Now I can choose whatever base I want at this point. I could choose 10, I could choose 100, I could choose whatever, but it makes sense to choose five because I know what log base five of 11 is, right? So let's choose five and it has to be the same for the top and bottom. So the nice thing is log base five of 11 we know is B. The problem is they didn't give us something for log base five of five. They give us log base five of six, but one nice thing to remember for a rule is when the base is equal to the argument, the value is just one. And this makes sense because the logarithm asks the question, the base raised to what power equals this argument? Well, five to the one power is five. So hence we get one over B, boom, done. So for number 29, we're gonna start by using our change of base formula, which says we take the logarithm of the numerator of any base we want, six elevenths over log of the base, which is log of 11. Now, since up top we're given information with log base five, log base five, I'm gonna presume that log base five makes the most sense here. Log base five of 11, we already know is B. So that's cool. But I don't know what log base five of six elevenths is, right? But I can again use my quotient, AKA subtraction rule to split this up to be log base five of the numerator minus log base five of the denominator. And that nice thing is log base five of six, as we already know is A, log base five of 11, we already know is B. So on top we get A minus B over B, and we can simplify that more to be A over B minus B over B, and B over B, anything over itself is one, so B over B is of course one, so we get a final simplified answer of A over B minus one, boom, done. So for this one, we're meant to evaluate without using any calculator. So let's use our property of logarithms to see if we can if we can figure this out. So the first thing is I see six log uh, sub eight to the of two, right? So I'm gonna use my power rule in reverse. I'm gonna turn that coefficient into a nice power. So this is gonna be log base eight of two to the six. Two to the six is two times itself six times. So that ends up being 64. And this is really great because remember, log base eight of 64 is asking eight to what power equals 64, eight squared. So this simplifies to two, so that's great. So this whole first thing is just two. Now we come to the second part, log base eight of 64 over three log base eight of four. So first I'm gonna pull a one third out in front and now I have log base eight of 64 over log base eight of four. The nice thing about the way this is formatted is I can use the change of base formula in reverse. So if I have log base eight of 64 over log base eight of four, meaning same base, this is the same as saying log base, and then that's the bottom argument, four of the top argument, 64, okay? So now, once again, we're back in that situation where this is really saying four to what power is 64? That's to the third power. Four times four is 16 times four is 64. So this simplifies to three. So now we have one third times three, which is one. So two plus one is three. There's your answer. So for this one, we're meant to use change of base to turn it into natural log. So again, it would be natural log. I could choose any base, but I'm just arbitrarily choosing natural logs because that's what it asked for. So I can make this natural log of the argument, the big number, over natural log of the base of the little number. And then now we'll plug it into Desmos to get an approximation. So here we go. We get 2.8135 and that rounds up to nine. So we get 2.81359 for the approximation. So for this one, we're gonna use the change of base formula with natural log as they specified to be natural log of the argument on top 5.38 over natural log of the base, which is six on bottom. Now let's plug and chug and approximate. And we get 0 0.9391 and then the two rounds up to three because of the six. So 0.93913, boom, done. So for this one, we're gonna use change of base formula first with natural logs as specified. So we take natural log of the big argument, 4.7, the big number on top, over ln of the base or the little number on the bottom. Now we'll plug into Desmos and approximate. So here we get negative 2.23266, 2.23266, boom, done. So for this one, it says use the quotient rule to find all x values such that this minus this equals one. So using the quotient rule, we know that when we have the same log, log base six, log base six, and a subtraction, it's the same as log base six of the quotient of these two. The first one going on top and the second argument going on the bottom, and this is equal to one. Now what I'm gonna do to solve this is I'm gonna convert this to its exponential equivalent, meaning I'm gonna say six, which is the base, to this power, to the first power, which is just six, equals x plus two 
over x minus 3. Now we're going to solve. I'm going to multiply both sides by x minus 3. Obviously, it's going to cancel out here. Here, it's going to be 6 times x minus 3 equals x plus 2. Then we're going to distribute, distribute 6x minus 18 equals x plus 2. Then I'm going to subtract x from both sides while simultaneously adding, oops, 18 to both sides. Sorry, it's a funny 18. And then we got 6x minus x is 5x. Uh, those cancel out. 2 plus 18 is 20. Divide both sides by 5. And I get 20 divided by 5, which is x equals 4. Now, just to be safe, you should plug and chug and make sure this indeed verifies. But 4 plus 2 is 6. Log base 6 of 6 is 1. 4 minus 3 is 1. Log base 6 of 1 or log base anything of 1 is 0. So 1 minus 0 indeed equals 1. There's your answer. So we're trying to prove that log base b of n is equal to 1 over log base n of b. So let's see if we can figure out how to do that. So the way that I'm going to prove this is I'm going to start by using the change of base formula for what we have on the left-hand side. And I can do that by saying this is equivalent to log base anything of that main argument n over log base anything of that little uh, base of the logarithm, which is b. So now I got something that looks a little bit more similar to this, but really to get the denominators to match up, I need to choose base n, right? So, but if I choose base n here, I must choose base n here because that is the change of base formula. These two have to be the same bases. Okay, but that's actually not a bad thing because log base n of n or log base 10 of 10 or log base a million of a million, when the bases are the same, that's equal to one. And the reason why, is because this asks the question, n to what power is n? Well, n to the first power is n. And then this just stays as is. So guess what? We've just shown that this, using change of base formula, is equivalent to this. So we've proved it. Boom. Done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please click that like button. If you want to see more from the Scalar Learning Channel, make sure to click subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining, and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.